starts her job today Working round her spikery the McTweed brothers, the Tartan Tonics, are best known for their offbeat performances and songs. For over 40 years, they have been in the public eye. Granddad's looking off he glum In bed we his collier's lung He'll soon be sir just a bum Be smoking Routher's baggy Harris and Lewis McTweet were born in the village of Invercury, Argyll on the west coast of Scotland. Their father was popular music hall performer Chester Field. With his friend, Tommy Tallboy, he formed the internationally renowned comedy duo Tallboy and Field. It was while performing in pantomime at the Echelfecken Grand, Chester met and married their mother, Tilly Dante. Tilly was known to audiences as the Scottish songbird. parents were a huge influence on us. We grew up surrounded by music, tap and laughter, especially when Uncle Tommy came to visit. As children, their father took them to all the big shows in Glasgow. The McTweeds were no strangers to the theatre. The Alhambra, The Citizens, The Saltire and Ira Gordon's Geggy were amongst their favourites. You saw some incredible acts. <laughs> oh, I did. Do you remember Mr. Bestiality? Oh, 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 Mr. Bestiality, a difficult man to forget. No film footage of Mr. Bestiality survives, but a sound recording of one of his acts still exists, taken from the Glasgow Alhambra in 1949. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage the vet's favourite, Mr. Bestiality! <laughs> One of a kind. He's acting the travel well though. You know he's, he was he was attacked outside the theatres. Ah, he was at attack. Invercury itself played a large part in the McTweed's development. What was it like living there? Of course, times were hard back then. Remember the year a feather gave me an empty shoebox and said it was an action man deserter? <laughs> I got a visible man all that year. Aye. But you know it was cold that winter. How cold was it? It was so cold even the polar bears in the zoo were wearing arm sweaters. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, um, Invercury doesn't actually have any beers, but it got some lines. The Curie lines? Oh, right, the Curie lines. The Curie lines it played at Dandelion Road every oh, week. Right, and he used to go and see them. As long as it wasn't too cold, of course. <laughs> Apparently, they're still going. Surely not, you're fucking my spawn. Aye, 
this fairly takes me back. Hey, Harris, look how fine to welcome us home. Oh, it's Andy the Hans Anderson. <laughs> We used to watch him here when we were a kid. He's a brilliant goalie. Ah, welcome back to Dandelion Road, lads, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you, Andy. <laughs> the home crowd, oh, they were rough as a badger's ears. If, if you were doing badly, they threw balls at you. And, and if you were doing well, well, they try to miss you. So what are you doing yourself now? Oh, I'm still playing goals. Oh. Eh? I'm fitting a man half my age. Half your age? You'd be lucky to find a man half your age. What age would that be? 82. <laughs> I'll, I'll take you both on. Any time. I, I like their feather. Uh, 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 Tallboy and, 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 and Field, uh, they were great performers. Uh, uh, no as good as Andy and Gandhi or, or, or the Twa Hoolies. <laughs> and their mother, Tilly Dante. Oh, she was wonderful. Uh, her whole performance lit up the stage. She, she was an angel, so she was. Here, I've got time to show you my ball scars. Uh, this was uh, Inverclaggy Ironworks, 19, semi-final 1957. As they had spent most of their life skipping school to help out their parents on the stage, the lads soon realised where their talents lay. They left Invercurry and moved to Glasgow, where they quickly became apprentice plumbers. We were sanitary engineers, or rather unsanitary ones. Aye, it wasn't the most glamorous job in the world, and we did smell a bit. It was difficult getting into theatres, let alone performing oh, in stage. Aye, aye. I remember Mr. Wrencher, boss, giving me the best advice. He said, uh, Lewis! Because that's what he called me. Aye, he always gets his mixed up. Aye. <laughs> he said, Lewis, your best tool's your kettle. Aye. But, you know, being a plumber wasn't such a bad job. It wasn't really not, except for the smell of the quiche. Aye, the quiche. Oh, it was terrible. Oh, it's it's terrible. all mere jobbies and Billy Gurney's oh, job. Oh, I Old skanky. It's no too bad. Old skanky. It's no too bad. We kept pushing ourselves to perform as much as we could. Before we performed in between, so we were known as the Chucky Steens for a few months. I played in a skiffle band, band the Penny Tossers, but the smell of the plumbing meant we lost a lot of gigs. So I just packed it in. Aye. The smell of the quiche overpowered the smell of the grease paint. Aye, it did. Eventually, the McTweeds caught the eye of local impresario Mal Rapide of Bingham and Lingham, who spotted their natural talent. We spoke to Danny McGinn, Mal's son, who now runs his father's business. I know my uh, my dad was fond of them, kind of stuff, Lewis and Harris. No, he, he thought they were great, you know. Um, and he was with them right from the very beginning of their professional career in a lot of ways, you know. And, and in fact, he would always tell a story about how he was in his office in, in Renfield Street one afternoon, and uh, this pair of scruff came in for the in for the. Uh, street to, to fix the drains kind of stuff, you know, and uh, they gave him the job and that was fine. But my father always said that they were humming, humming all afternoon, just all these wee Scottish songs that were humming tunes all afternoon kind of stuff. And, and, and it kind of, I don't know, maybe it just kind of, maybe he was having a bad day, but it, it cheered them up no end. And um, God bless him, but he, he asked them the addition, you know, and then he signed them up almost straight away. He was a hell of a man for poor impulse decisions after he'd been for a, for a liquid lunch. You know, he was always making rash, rash, rash decisions. <sighs> we had about three ladders at one point. <sighs> no, we, we remember it differently. When we discovered the place was a theatrical agent, we thought it'd be a, a good idea to do a, a turn for Mr. Rapide. It wasn't much an addition piece, it was just a few verses of Bonnie, Mary or Guile, but they got off the contract right there and then. I mean, to be fair to my dad, you know, for, for two two performers that hadn't really much experience, he kind of pushed them, and it wasn't that long before they had a had a residency at the, 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 the Sunnyside uh, Playhouse in Coat Bridge. That was a place, that was a... That made... That made Prisons in Bangkok would appeal to be honest, you know. But you know, it was it was regular work, you know, and uh I come used to the performers that were there, they they kinda of sort of put up with it. In fact, they used to call it Disneyland. The 
toilet doesn't work, the kettle doesn't work, the curtain doesn't work, the lighting doesn't work. To be honest, it was a hell of a place. It really was a hell of a place, you know. Oh, Jim, he was the, he was the stage doorkeeper, and uh, he spent most of his time naming rats um, after performers that he just thought were horrible and he just didn't like, you know. And to be fair, there were an awful lot of rats, and most of them had names. The stage door doesn't work. The tannoy doesn't work. The rat poison doesn't work. The sink doesn't work. The stage manager doesn't work. I think they performed there for a while, you know. It was going okay, but you know, it was never really going to work out. You know, there was there was quite a quite a spate of particularly nasty rat attacks. All in Harris, funnily enough. I don't know what it was about Harris, but the rats just didn't like him at all. In fact, sometimes, sometimes they would wait outside his dressing room, and sometimes they'd wait outside. I don't know what it was about him. Maybe there was some ingrained odour from, from the old days. I don't know. But, you know, but it was cost my father a hell of a lot of money on uh, plasters and antibiotics and, and bubonic plague medicine and... and and the other thing, I suppose, that the main thing for the McTweeds themselves was the state of the plumbing. You know, when it came to plumbing, they were both like Mariah Bloody Carey, you know. If, if, if the plumbing wasn't up to it, they wouldn't work. That was their thing, you know. It was just... So eventually they had to move on, you know. It was kind of slim pickings because they moved on towards the end of the season. And um, they ended up in, in Thurso for a, for a winter season. For several winter seasons, several long bleak, soul-destroying, miserable seasons, like a gulag. Of course, uh, we were really at an all-time low. If Scotland had piles, you'd find them in Thurso. Can I say that? Or I, I'll only say it then. We just won the Best Newcomers Award at the Inverclidgey Folk Festival in Tyree. So the prospect of going back to Mrs. Snedden's guest house was less than appealing. Of course, all good things must come to an end, and all absolutely bloody terrible things usually come to an end too. So eventually, um, after some kind of ridiculous incident involving a ball cock and, and Lewis being furious about it, they, they, they kind of left Thurso as well. And they were just kind of circling round about for a wee while. No, nothing was really happening, you know, they'd won an award and stuff, but, you know, they were out coming out, out, out of the public eye. And then, though... Stroke of genius. Prime time, Saturday night, my dad got one of them a job on the telly. You know, just after Basil Brush, just before Doctor Who. And that, that kept them in the public eye, at least, well, in the public ear. And now, Lewis McTweed with the football results. Perth United 1, Quag Thistle 0. Rannick Rovers 2, Kinloch Dull, 1. Tully Banneker Athletic against Corey Mulloch, match postponed. Banterflem, 0. Glenn Dockert, 154. Bloater, 5. Dam of Pubis, 1. Keltyburn Astronomicals, 0. Come we'll stab him, 0. Dinky Dongle Wanderers, 1. Netherburn Vale, 1. Kyle of Clooney, 3. Old Bridge of Tadger, 2. This is the BBC. It's 6 o'clock and it's time for The Lavy Lads, written by and starring Harris and Lewis McQueen. This week... Up Shirt Creek! Hello? Between plumbers? Toilets a speciality? No job too small. <laughs> oh, hey. hello, Mr. McBlurty. What's that? No? Oh, sorry, we're too busy at the moment. You'll have to try some other plumbers. Try Gordon and Sons Plumbing Services in the Main Street. Cheerio! Well, Lewis, is that you turning down work again? That's the third time this week. You know what you are? You're just a lazy layabout. That's what you are. I've had enough. Who is that? 
I thought it was with you. Anyway, that was Mr. McBlurty for the zoo on the phone. Wanted us to clean out the elephant house again. No way, no how, never again. <laughs> That's exactly what I thought. I suggested he tried Flush Gordon up the road. <laughs> Says Flush Gordon, right? So, what have you been up to? I've been cleaning out some old pipes. Aye, it's a fine day for burling and curling your crevice. What does that mean? No idea. I just made it up. Thought it sounded good. I love you lads was a radio series based on their hilarious exploits when we were plumbers. Now, I spent months writing the scripts, and Lewis here went back and put the smut in. <laughs> yeah, in the back of the radio series, we released a first single, which was a, a cover version of See What a Cold Wind Blows Up Your Passage. Aye. And it did, it did re reasonably well, Aye. I suppose. it was a big hit in that Saudi Arabia, apparently. Aye. And then we get really excited because we get a chance to appear on Top of the Pops. We did. Yeah, but they, they turned us down at the last minute. Aye, it was vetoed one of those DJs. Of course, my money's in that Dave Lee Hanny, the hairy tranny. He never liked us. He always said that performing in tartan skips was too gimmicky. At the time of making this documentary, Dave Lee Hanny was unavailable for comment. For the next 20 years, the brothers continued to tour and entertain their appreciative audiences. An historic deal with Plectrum Records was signed, and they have to date released over 217 albums. If I had to select a favourite album, I think it would be Songs from the Heather, which was a collection of classical Scottish love songs, written by the likes of Burns, Byron, Sir Walter Scott. Hmm. I really liked Angus McCuddy's A Healing Coo, a whole album about funny wee animals and their funny wee ways. It was a nod recording contract, but eventually it worked out in their favour. The strange thing is, we get 20p for every Rolling Stones album sold. The funny thing is, we're leaving in the same label. I, of course, all our back catalogue has now been released on compact disc. I'm a really big country and western fan, so I went and I ordered a Dolly Parton CD from the internet. A week later, they just knock at the door and open the door, and this find this big bloke dressed in a sparkly dress and a blonde wig. I said, What's going on? Where's my Dolly Parton CD? I'm a cross dresser, said the bloke. You're cross! You're cross! I'm bloody furious! After the release of their Grammy nominated album Tartan Troubadours, Harris announced his marriage to 21 year old singer songwriter Amy Nitrate. Well, rock and roll was dead. Hendrix was dead. Bambi was dead. Punk was in a deep coma, fed through a leaking intravenous drip. But Harris wasn't dead. Do you think those would be good lyrics for a song? We first met when he was asked to do some accordion solos for my Celtic Concepts album, Quotes from a Quisling. I'd never met anyone like him before. Aye, she was charming in a strange, psychotic -y sort of way. But we had it off straight away. Until I discovered she had a bit of a rebellious streak. Staying out till all hours. The smoking. The drinking. And then there was the sex. Apparently she did that too. I did love Harris. I'm still glad we got together the happiest three weeks of my life. Aye. She was a bit racy. <sighs> Sometime later, BBC Scotland offered the McTweeds their own children's television show that would air on Sunday afternoons. The McTweeds' Button Ben was set to be a huge hit. Sunday afternoon was a wasteland when it came to children's television. 
and the potent brand of banter with puppet sidekick Pally Tin and cartoons should have been a hit. Unfortunately, the show impressed neither audience nor the McTweeds and was quickly removed from the television schedules. Well, Pally Tin, it's birthday time at the Bart and Ben. Hey, I just love birthdays, Horace. Oh, you silly wee tin. My name's Harris. That's what I said. I love birthdays, but getting old fear does my head in. Well, our first birthday is wee Tommy McClafferty. Tommy's six years old and is hoping for three packets of top trump cards. And look what Tommy's done. He's drawn a picture of Pally being sick. Well done, Tommy. Lovely drawing there. And her second birthday is Shona Kiko. And she's going to be nine soon. And she's hoping for a new daddy because the angels took her old daddy away. I wish somebody would take me away. Now, boys and girls, happy birthday! And we're now going to a cartoon with everyone's favourite, Pesky Penguin. I wonder what antics he's been up to this week. Me like Pishy Penguin. Your curtains are rubbish, by the way. Can you not afford Bugs Bunny or something? Hey, the weed should switch over and watch something else. You shouldn't have to watch a big Jesse with a beard. I think that's a drink talking, children. It was all a bit of a disaster. The voice of Pally Tin was done by Carter Deeds, an old actor we used to watch at the Saltire. We didn't realise at the time, but he'd become disillusioned, depressed and incontinent. To be fair though, I think it had more to do with his ever grown dependence on prescription drugs. And then, sadly, one morning, he took his trousers down and flashed in front of an assistant floor manager. He never worked again, neither did she. Soon after, Lewis received an unexpected phone call. It, it came straight out of the blue. It was the producer of Chanter Films. He wanted to offer me the part of Clary Waterick in the latest version of Andrew's Magic Spurtle. What were you saying? Aye, aye, aye. Of course, back then, there was only a handful of Scottish actors. There was uh, Duncan McCrae and De Douglas, Kirk Douglas, and then of course the king himself, Gordon Jackson. I duff my cap. Uh, at that point, everybody was trying to get into the acting game. My agent got me a really good leading role, the enigmatic Clary Wittrick. Good money, filming in Czechoslovakia, which doubled as the Scottish Highlands. Fortunately, I couldn't take it. I was embroiled in my hit TV show. Do you remember it? Time out. Yeah, I'll give you all a clue. <clears throat> Everybody shut out. Come on, it wasn't that long ago. Everybody shut out. Time out. Wonderful, absolutely great. I... <laughs> I remember that I eventually accepted a little, no, as a smaller but very good role. It was the brutal Daniel Braxfield. <laughs> I remember we had a bit of a problem though. The writer was absolutely determined that we were going to speak the dialogue in old Scots. And to this day, I'm convinced that some of those words were made up. I mean, have you ever heard of Renatouche or Gendugo? I've never found it in any dictionary that I've seen. Andra's Magic Spurtle, Findlay Farquharson's classic tale of magic and porridge in the Scottish Highlands. Here a deal is body ricked enough. I'm in poor fettle, Mr. Wattrick. What graggles you so? Wee dicky Donny, my doty duggies run awaw. Oh, I didn't flash. See here, a magic spurtle. Give to me yesterday by a clatty cadger in the venom. Take it. 
Rub it fast and wash hard. Dickie Donny. It got some good reviews. Why it didn't do better? Ach, I'll never understand it. Nobody could understand it. That's what the problem was. Huh? I walked again with Lewis in the Kaja in Drumrai. That's where we became very good pals. So, uh, how's your old man doing since he left the big house? You're not going to believe this. He's taken up the pigeon fancy. <laughs> so, so what's that then? Taking pigeons out to, for drinks and paying them into pictures? Nah, 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 nah. It's a hobby. He picked it up inside, believe it or not. They used to call him the Birdman of Berlin. <laughs> yeah. Remember at high school, there was this guy. He's called uh, Skelly McPherson. No. Aye, he, he had a lazy left eye. Aye, aye, aye. aye, aye. My aye. old man was talking about him yesterday. Old man was saying that he had lazy legs because they could only take him as far as a room. <laughs> aye. My dad says he doesn't have to work because huh? he's named Stuart <laughs> and related to the Scottish royal family. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you're an old man right enough. Hmm? So, eh, uh, how's your Shona's problem? Ah, uh, well, it's clearing up rather nicely. The doctor gave her the same tablets I'm on. Uh, seemed to be doing the trick. Well, uh, I talk to Shona, show her my tea on. Time to get home. Oh, so, so, what is it, the night then? Same as last night. Homemade pigeon pie. Same time tomorrow. The McTweed brothers were also known for their charity work. So it was no surprise that in 1984, they got involved with Sir Bob Geldof's Band-Aid campaign. It started off when we did Children in Need one year. When did we do Children in Need? I think it was here before the African gig. I have, I have to think that giving lucky bags and sweeties to kids in Easter House constitutes children in need. Well, first of all, Bob wants us to go down to London and sing Do They Know It's Christmas single, yeah. but we would bigger and better ideas. Yeah, what we did was we got a few of our showbiz cronies together and we did a gig in the Hebrides. Aye. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, before we introduce the next act, which is going to be Inver, Clergy Folk Festival Choir, but just like to say, hush! Hush! Everybody see? <laughs> and we'd, we'd both like to thank you for supporting this most noble cause. Now, where's the sponsor sheet? It's in my sporing. Where's your sporing? Clean out my sporing. Oh, and we'd like to thank, we'd like, we'd like to thank Callum at the bar for the drink and the lock in. Callum, come on, everybody. And we'd also like to thank PC Phil for the security. Thank you, PC Phil. Here's your fucking money. Just can't see that. Hey, no, that's what Bob Gandalf says. No, because Auntie Barbara's in the audience. Oh. Sorry, Auntie Barbara. All came good in the end and managed to raise £740 and 25p. For much of that time, we're arguing around about the time of the chariot concert. 
uh, creative differences. Right. Well, cause in part by the Lewis's problems with the old butcho collapso juice. So we decided to take a break and find different ways to express ourselves. Around this time, Lewis found time for a family, and his son Lamlash was born. Aye, it was an unexpected blessing. <laughs> I was totally shocked. The first I knew about it was when I read Francis Gay's expose in the Sunday Post. Because of ongoing legal action, we are unable to mention Lumlash's mother. However, we are able to depict the course of Lewis's doomed affair in mime. a bonny baby. When he was a toddler, he used to stand up in his pram and sing. One time, after a few bars, he fell on the pavement. He started greeting. It wasn't because he hurt himself, it was because he never got around applause. <laughs> Obviously takes after his dad. What? A born performer? No, fall not the pavement after a few bars. Years of partying were taking their toll. Well, you know, you'll have heard of sex, drugs and rock and roll. But up here, in the tartan circuit, it's Hook Candy Hot Magandy. Which happens to be the name of my first solo album. It was an experimental album at heart. We just wanted to give the establishment a kick up the jacksie. The 1980s were a time of social unrest. Lewis was becoming more involved in Scotland's political scene. Aye, there was obviously a lot of Westminster jiggery pokery going on, which wasn't particularly good for the people of Scotland. I was asked to do the odd gig, which, which I did. I quite enjoyed that, actually. And then there was the tattoo. Aye, you had the tattoo done. The... The tattooist in the Tron Gate was a wee bit deep. That was a wee bit worse for wear, so he didn't realise until later on. However, in what was seen as a rare excursion into the turbulent political waters, one particular track from the album was seen to be a thinly veiled cry for an independent Scotland. I want to break free. I want to break free. I want to break free from your lies, you're so self-satisfying. I don't need you. I want to break free. God knows. God knows I want to break free. Varoi skanky, shai hai yoshi yu suki. Is that all right? I went to see Dr. Wallace, who strongly suggested I cut down on my drinking. I talk about a wake up call. It turns out Dr. Wallace is a local vet. I was so stocious, I went into surgery thinking it was off license. set in Edinburgh. We had some interesting storylines. We tried to tackle current social issues, drugs, thugs, prostitution, general deviance. And that was just the writers. 
Call this a newspaper? Who writes this rubbish? I was in the pool last night, and it didn't cork you with it. Run into that wee bird of yours. Oh, Linda? No. Barbara? No. Ah, Katie? No, the exotic one. Ah, the lovely Yasmin. Dusky princess of the East. No, no, no. the Jambos fan. Nice wee doll. Give her one, tea. Ha, <laughs> that'd be Maureen. Aye, that's all right. Here, yeah. do you look at the norks on that? They're called breast spoil, and you'll find half the population in the world have them. None here, sir. I wouldn't be too sure. From where I'm standing, I can see a right pair. I'll have a desk back, Gaggy. Thank you. Now, pay attention, I have a very important case. What? The briefcase, eh? <laughs> it's like Dr. Knox working in Birkin here. Doctor who? Knox! Knox! Who's there? <laughs> Suffering <laughs> God. Right, let's get to work. A new generation of fans have discovered the McTweed's music and comedy musings. Several McTweed's tribute bands are growing in popularity, most notably the McTweed's and the McTwats. Hey. <laughs> Is that supposed to be us? That's terrible. The best form of flattery, apparently. Maybe she takes some sort of injunction or doubt on them. Mm. Same thought, so. Remember when you try to sue the Proclaimers? Aye. Oof. I would take them out with a gun. Aye, but you're a tribute band yourself. You used to impersonate Elvis in the 1960s. Yep, I did have my own Elvis tribute in the 1960s. Elvis Paisley. Of course, the one they called tribute acts back then. Now they're called cheap rip-offs. I'll have you know that I rewrote most of Elvis's best-known tracks including Viva Les Mahigo and of course my favourite As the snow flies and a cold and grey Glasgow man a poor little scabby wean is born in the garbles <laughs> It's true what you say, eh? you can't choose your family, you pick your nose More recently, the McTweeds established their own production company, Tweedly Deedly Productions their new television series, Harris Rambles On, is due for broadcast early in the new year. Is that thing on, Lam Lash? Come on, follow me, follow me, follow me. Come on, follow me, come on. Is really worth it. And here we have a spectacular sight. Glasgow Public Park. There are three to four parks in this area where you can go for a stroll and you can walk your dog. And here we see the sign of a disrespectful dog owner. Have you got the turd lamb lash? Let's bring the camera back up. I bring it, bring it back up. Come on now, that's better. Now, we've got some rubbish over here. We've got trees down there. And to this side here, we've got the first sign of summer. What's an old Jakey lying in the grass? All of life is here in a Glasgow public park. have to be philosophical about these things. I'm not bitter. Thirteen years of good innings. 
All the best to them. Of course he's upset. He was a face of skanky for years. And he was never shot in the dirty bottle. Life is just a series of swings and roundabouts. With those dodgy monkey bars thrown in every so often to throw you off balance. We asked Harris and Lewis, after 40 years in show business, if they had any regrets. Regrets? No, I don't think we've got any regrets. We've met a lot of people and had a really good time. Plus, we've made folks' lives brighter and cheerier. And you can't really ask for more than that. Plus, tonight is the opening night of our 18th Scottish tour. And it's a sellout. I've always regretted not getting Helen Mirren's phone number. Seriously though. We're still here and still entertaining, hopefully. Doing something you love keeps you young. Roll on the next 40 years. There was an old soldier Have you fought at the battle of Glen, my girl? Come near me in battle and you're sure to fall. I'll whip it, my duck, and I'll give it my all. I'll battle you, then I'll throw you straight to hell. As I fight at the battle of Glen, my girl. I'm known as a fighter, I have many foes. Wherever I go, the blood always flows. My name As I fight at the battle of when my bell Come near me in battle when you're sure to fall I'll whip it, my duck and I'll give it my own I'll bother you then, I'll send you straight to hell As I fight at the battle of when my bell The battle is over, there's limbs on the ground Because it is lost, I'm no hanging around I lift up my lady and I bid them farewell As I flee from the battle of when my kill Come near me in battle and you're sure to fall I'll whip it my duck and I'll give it my all I'll battle you then I'll send you straight to hell As I fight the dead 